Hi, right, good evening, guys. Welcome to 541. So I, I, I thought, you know, uh, I'd pop in a little bit early today just because I know there's a lot of probably questions that you guys have about the virtual instruction and, um, you know, a lot of uncertainty about what this class is going to be like. So um, if you guys have any questions about anything, you can uh, definitely feel free to ask. Um, professor? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just have a quick question. Um, for the course uh, prerequisites for this one, um, I've never taken any final element in my undergrad. Is that, mm -hmm. is that okay or? Yeah, I, that's, that's kind of generally what I, I, I expect because, um, you know, for a lot of places, it's, it's not a required class. I mean, here it's not even a required class too. Um, okay. So, you know, if, if you, even if you, you know, did your undergrad here, um, you would have to take 410, which is the uh, the elective as an elect as basically as one of your electives. Um, so I, I I know that I know people are coming in even for those who have taken finite elements before. There's there's a lot of variance in how different professors teach it. So I am going to build up everything from scratch. Um, you know, basically as 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 if you know if you have no experience before. I, I will go a little bit fast in the beginning just because you know we have to get to some some of the more advanced topics. Uh, okay. But I, I will be starting everything from scratch. Okay, cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.
So if you're just joining, um, you know, I, 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 uh, joined, I joined the, the lecture, you know, quite a bit early today just because I, I know there's probably a lot of questions about the virtual instruction and, uh, you know, what's going to happen this semester. So if you have any questions about, uh, about any of that, um, definitely feel free to ask. So you can turn on your microphone if you feel comfortable doing that, um, or you can leave the question in the chat and I'll answer, uh, I'll answer from there too. Hi everybody. So if you're just joining the call, um, I uh, you know I want to open this time. If you have any questions about you know what the virtual instruction is going to be like, or you know what this class, just any questions that you have about the class, because I know there's probably a lot of uncertainty uh, and a lot of anxiety about you know having this semester be completely virtual. So uh, anything that you want to ask, definitely feel free. Um, if you want to ask through the, your microphone, that's that's fine. But uh, if you know if you don't want to do that, you can type out your question in the chat, and I'll be uh, happy to answer. Will the lectures be recorded and available for later on? Yes. Yeah. Um, so it's it's recording right now. So the uh, so all the lectures will be recorded and uploaded on YouTube. Um, you know, within 24 hours of of the of the lecture. So um, you'll be able to access those um, from the Canvas site. So uh, basically, as soon as it's uploaded on YouTube and it's processed, I, I'll put the link on the Canvas site so you can uh, you can access it.
Okay, it's uh, 5.30, so let's go ahead and get started today. Uh, welcome, everybody. So this is our first lecture for EGME 541. Um, so this is the graduate level finite elements class for mechanical engineers. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, uh, for coming today. Um, so my name is uh, Professor Justin Tran. Um, so just as a kind of a quick, um, you know, uh, disclaimer, um, you know, I, I uh, you know, you can call me whatever you want. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's fine with me. So if you want to call me professor, uh, you can call me Dr. Tran, um, you want to be Justin, you can call me, you know, all, I've, I've been called all manner of names because I've, I've grown up with, um, you know, online gaming. So I've, I've had kind of 12 year olds call me all sorts of things. And, um, you know, they've kind of, they've told me all the terrible things they did to my mom, uh, last night. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm used to being called names, but if you, uh, um, if you turn on your mic in the middle of lecture and, and say like, Hey, dick face, then, you know, I probably won't respond to you. So, you know, if you're going to call me something like that, then, uh, probably save it for our private correspondence. Right? Okay. Um, um, oh, um, looks like there's, uh, some problems with the audio is, is, uh, is the audio okay for, for everybody? Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, it is I good. Think. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. 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 So, uh, um, so if you're, if you're having trouble with the audio, maybe, uh, check, check the volume settings on your laptop or, or, you know, it might be your internet connection. Um, you know, um, that, that might be something that's, uh, that's causing the issues. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, as you can tell, just, just by the fact that we're all here on this Zoom call, this semester is going to be very different. Uh, so I know a lot of you guys, um, you know, I, I see a lot of familiar faces in the class. So I know a lot of you were here last spring uh, when we kind of made the sudden shift to virtual teaching. Um, and, you know, the, the plan from the university is to basically have this continue for this entire semester. So I know there's, there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of anxiety that, uh, that's associated with um, you know, this change. So, you know, before, before I, you know, I get started with any of the content from the class today, um, you know, I, I wanted to open up for just any questions or concerns that you guys have that um, I can answer um, right now, kind of before we, uh, we get started. So, um, so if you want to ask a question, you, you can turn on your mic and ask. Um, that's, that's definitely fine. Um, or you can leave your question in the chat too. Um, and then I'll be happy to answer from there as well. So before the lecture, there was a um, someone asked if the lectures are going to be recorded. So um, yes, the, the, all the lectures will be recorded and uploaded on YouTube uh, within 24 hours of the lecture. So um, you can find the links for the for all the recorded lectures from our Canvas site. Okay. So are there uh, any qu any questions about uh, the class? You know, before we get started today. Okay, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, as, as we go along, you know, you might, you might think of some questions. So, you know, at, at any time today, you know, feel free to stop me and, uh, um, you know, and, and ask your question and, you know, I'm gonna be happy to, to answer, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll share my screen, okay? And minimize this, okay? Okay. All right, so uh, so I prepared some some lecture slides for today. So this is this is not a usual thing for me. Usually I I, I don't like slides too much. So I, I usually like to uh, to develop things, um, you know, as if you know we had a whiteboard. But you know I think slides are nice when you want to show a lot of pretty pictures, which is um, you know a, a big part of what I'm going to do today. Um, so this is our first lecture for EGME 541 finite element um, the finite element method for mechanical engineers, okay? and this is the fall 2020 semester. All right, so a little bit about myself. So, um, you know, usually, usually I, I don't change this slide at all from, from uh, semester to semester. So I actually made this slide, you know, when I first joined here and I, I basically just used the same one. But I had to make a, a little bit of a, of a change this time because my office no longer is on campus. I mean, it's still physically there, but I'm, uh, you know, we can't, we can't go there. Um, so my office is gonna be here in my apartment. Um, so this is only temporary. Um, so my email is given by um, that one there. So it's uh, um, justran at fullerton.edu. Um, so it's kind of a, a little bit of an amalgamation of my of my name. So if you ever forget my email, it, it's usually pretty easy to remember because it looks like justran at fullerton.edu. Um, so luckily there was, there was no running club at, uh, at Fullerton that took that name. So I was able to kind of have my own namesake for my email. Um, and I know some of you have, have had me before um, 
multiple times for um, as an instructor, so you're probably tired of hearing that joke. But I have to say it because you know um, it's it's kind of a, a funny way to remember my email. Right? Okay, so I grew up in Cyprus. Um, so I'm I'm a local I'm a local boy. So I uh, you know grew up um, maybe about like eight um, seven eight miles west of uh, of the Cal State Fortin campus. So. Um, so I'm very familiar with, uh, uh, you know, with this campus and, you know, I had a lot of friends that, that went here for, uh, for their college. Um, a little bit about my educational background. So I got my bachelor's from UCLA, got a uh, master's from UCSD and my PhD from Stanford, uh, all in mechanical engineering. Okay. Um, and my research interests are actually, you know, very highly rated, related to this class. So uh, it's, it's really the application of engineering tools and, you know, by engineering tools, I mean finite element methods to study heart uh, and blood disease and medical devices. So a lot of things that have to do with blood flow and you know, anything that, that goes on in the human body. Okay, um, so the next thing I wanna I want cover today is our class learning objectives. Um, so if, you, if you've had me before, you're probably familiar with these uh, quite a bit. So what I do each day is I, I start the day with kind of you know, three or four statements about um, you know, uh, going over basically what we're gonna cover that day. And I, and I designed these learning objectives such that you know, they, they start with a verb and they describe something that's very kind of specific that you can do. Because um, I, I, I really like that kind of way of designing the class where like, you know, you come to the lecture and you see the learning objectives and you say, okay, you know, after I sit, um, you, you know, sit here for 75 minutes, you know, go through the lecture, I should be able to do these three or four things. Um, and I should be able to do it uh, really well. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a nice way to, you know, first of all, to keep everything organized with the lecture, but also kind of to kind of give you guys a, a way to um, kind of check yourself to see, you know, did I, you know, did I, did I understand everything from the lecture today? Can I do all of these tasks, right? Um, so the learning objectives for today is um, we're going to um, learn how to describe the use and utility of finite elements in engineering work. Uh, we're going to describe just the basic steps of the finite element process. Uh, and we're also going to prepare for the semester by um, going over the course expectations and policies from the course syllabus. Okay, so let's get into it. So, um, you know, um, I know I know a lot of you have you know ha maybe had some experience with finite elements um, or or not, but you know I, I want to start with kind of just the general question of what is finite element analysis, um, and the the acronym that is used quite often is FEA. So FEA is short for finite element analysis, and why is it important? Um, so finite elements are, is actually, you know, quite a broad subject and it's actually used, um, you know, for a lot of different things, but um, I, I really like this definition that kind of sums it up in one sentence. So finite element analysis is a numerical technique for solving differential equations on arbitrary geometries. Okay? Um, so there's kind of a lot going on here. So let's kind of break it down. So um, the, the word that I have underlined there is numerical. Um, and what that basically means is that you know we're going to be relying on computers to uh, to perform a lot of the calculations. Um, so I think normally you know a lot of um, you're probably used to um, you know performing calculations by hand um, or doing maybe like a proof or a derivation. In finite elements, you know we um, basically what we're going to do is we're, we're going to do we're going to basically set up the problem and then we're going to let the computer kind of do all the uh, the hard work. Um, so. Um, you know, it, it kind of makes it seem, you know, it, it kind of makes it seem easy like that. But, you know, the way that we, we have to kind of, we have to kind of set up the problem in a very specific way uh, in order for the computer to really, um, you know, be able to, to do our calculation. Right? Um, so the next part is differential equations. Um, so the, the, the thing that um, finite elements relies on is the fact that, you know, we have all of these differential equations, ordinary differential equations, partial differential equations that um, is able to describe kind of the physical behavior of a lot of engineering systems that we that we know. So, you know, if you think of like heat transfer, you know, there's the heat equation, you know, which is a partial differential equation. Or if you think of fluid mechanics, you have your Navier-Stokes. So these differential equations, normally they're they're very difficult to solve, um, especially, you know, when you when you think of arbitrary geometries. But the finite element method basically allows us to solve these differential equations on very complex geometries. Um, and that's, um, and kind of the last, the last part of this definition is probably what a lot of you know finite elements for is that, um, you know, uh, if you're familiar with kind of the commercial software ANSYS, um, with that you're able to find like, um, you know, you're able to perform a stress analysis on a part that, you know, might be very, very complicated that would otherwise be impossible to do hand calculations on. Okay, so uh, so this next bullet here is, you know, the important thing is that we leverage computers to perform the arithmetic and algebraic calculations. So, you know, the, the powerful thing with computers is that it can, you know, perform these calculations at lightning fast speeds. There's, um, it's basically impossible for, for humans to keep up. Okay? 
And, what's, and what engineers basically use it for is that it allows engineers to basically predict how a physical system will react when subjected to external effects from the loads and the environment. So, um, you know, just to kind of give you an example, let's say, let's say we're civil engineers and, you know, we're designing a bridge um, that's going to go over, you know, a, a river or something. Um, and so, you know, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're, you're interested in say, you know, let's say we have 50 cars that are stopped on the bridge because of maybe some traffic accident and we have winds coming at the bridge, you know, at maybe at a speed of 80 miles per hour, you know, we want to know if our bridge is going to collapse, um, or not. Right. And most of the time, you know, you want to figure this out before you actually build the bridge. Cause if you build a bridge, um, and then, you know, that situ exact situation happens and your bridge falls apart, that's usually not a, a good thing because you have, um, you know, tons of in injuries, tons of death, and, you know, you're probably never going to be an engineer again for the rest of your life. Um, so, you know, the ability to um, predict these, uh, um, how a physical system will react before you actually go in and actually build it is a really powerful tool in engineering, especially when, you know, it, it takes, usually takes a lot of money to build a lot of these prototypes. Um, you're thinking things like airplanes or bridges, you know, it, it costs a lot of money. So, you know, before you actually go set out and actually build something, you want to make sure that it's uh, as good as it, as it can be. And FEA is kind of the, the way that you, you go about that. Okay. Um, and this last bullet here, you know, we, we kind of just already talked about it where, you know, basically F, what FEA allows you to do is it allows you to analyze systems with really complicated geometries, really complicated boundary conditions that, you know, would normally be impossible with just hand calculations. Okay. okay. Um, so are there any questions on that so far? Okay, uh, so let's keep on going. So, um, you know, the next thing I want to talk about is kind of different, uh, the different types of analysis. So, and by types of analysis, I mean, these are um, different ways that you can approach problems, uh, engineering problems. Okay? So the first category is analytical. Um, so these are what I call like the pen, your pen and paper calculations. Um, so these are probably the methods that you're familiar with some, from some of your fundamental classes. So like you take a class in fluid mechanics, you would solve the Navier-Stokes equations by hand on like a, a very simple geometry. Or you take a class in strength and materials, you know, you, you um, solve the structural mechanics equations on like a simple geometry. Um, so the nice thing about analytical um, methods is that they're really fast and they're really inexpensive. Uh, you're basically just paying for the pencil and the paper. Um, but, you know, because you're doing all the calculations by hand, you know, you're extremely limited to the kinds of problems that you can do. So you're basically limited to basically the simplest of problems. Okay? Um, so the next type of analysis or the next way that you can analyze an engineering system is with an experimental approach. And so the idea with the experimental approach is that, you know, the best way to find out what's going to happen to your bridge or your airplane is to just go out and try it. So you run an experiment. Um, and you know, and you subject it to all the loads that are and all the boundary conditions that you expect, and you collect data and see what's uh, what's going to happen. So, um, experimental methods, um, you know, will produce you the best data because there's no um, there's no uh, um, harder truth than what Mother Nature will give you. Um, so, um, you know, a lot of times if there's a disagreement between you know an experiment and a simulation, people are going to believe the experiment because it actually happened in in reality, right? Um, so experiments are, are really great because it, it gives you kind of the best quality data and you can handle basically anything um, that you can throw at it as long as you can build it and, and emulate the, the conditions. But it, it's costly and time consuming. So it takes a long time to build the, uh, um, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of money to build the prototypes. And a lot of times you need like a, a huge staff in order to make sure the, the, uh, the experiment goes off you know, correctly. And so the last type of analysis that, um, that, will, um, that you know, we'll be doing mostly in this class is computational. So it's similar to analytical in that you know, we're going to be relying on solving the governing equations, um, you know, more specifically the governing differential equations. But um, instead of doing the calculations by hand, we're going to let the computer to, to um, do it. And you know, like we talked about before, computers are way better doing these calculations than humans. So, um, the best, so the nice thing about computations is that you kind of get the best of both worlds where, you know, you can handle very complex situations and it can be, you know, extremely inexpensive. Um, but the thing with computations is that um, it can be really tricky to set up. So, you know, what I really want you guys to focus on in this class is, um, you know, FEA can be a very powerful tool, but you have to use it right. So, you know, if, um, if you basically misuse FEA or you don't set up the problem properly, um, then, you know, you might as well not be doing anything because you're going to be getting wrong results and it's, you know, it's not going to help you at all. So let's go over some examples. So let's, uh, so let's say that, you know, you want to do a beam analysis. 
Um, so this might be an example that you might do um, in like say a strength of materials class. So you have a simply supported beam um, with a, uh, a pin support on the, uh, on the left and a roller on the right and you have some kind of distributed load. Um, so for these kind of simple situations, you can solve it by hand and get you know, um, the deflection in the beam and the stress distribution in the beam. Um, but you know, as, as you know, this is an extremely simple case and almost never happens in, in reality. Um, maybe not quite exactly like this. But if you want to do something complex, like you wanted to analyze the supports in like a, in like a complex building like this, you need to rely on, on, uh, on finite elements to basically give you the stress. So basically what you're seeing here, uh, which is you know, a, a view that you'll see quite often in this class, is you know, the stress distribution of this, uh, of this particular joint um, after the building is, is stressed. Okay, so let's do an example of heat transfer. So this might be something that you're familiar with from your heat transfer class where you have a slab of material with thermal conductivity K and a uh, um, cross-sectional area A, and you have two different temperatures on either side, T1, T2, and you can solve the, the heat equation in this simple case to get the temperature distribution, which is what you see with the red line in the, in the figure here. Um, but if you, know, if you wanna do heat transfer analysis for something that's complex, like, you know, like a turbine blade like this, you know, this would be really hard to do with hand calculation. So you would need to rely on computation to do this. And FEA kind of gives you the platform and it gives you the capabilities to uh, perform heat transfer analysis on really complex geometries like this. Okay. okay, and then one last example. So let's do fluid flow. So uh, let's say that, you know, you have flow in a pipe where, you know, you have two, uh, you have an inlet pressure of P1 and an outlet pressure of P2. Um, and, you know, in this simple case, you can solve the Navier-Stokes equations for the velocity distribution that you see in blue, right? Um, but if you wanted to uh, solve for, you know, the velocity distribution within like something complex, like, uh, like I have here. So this is a, uh, um, a surgical geometry for, uh, uh, for a patient who was born with a single ventricle. You know, so you have kind of very complex geometries here. You would need to rely on computations to do this. So you wouldn't be able to do something like this by hand. So, you know, FEA is a very powerful tool. You know, it can, it can really give you access to situations that, you know, you might not otherwise have. But the key is that you always have to set it up correctly. Um, and that's, that's a lot easier said than, than done. Okay, okay so, uh, so here, you know, I, I wanna open up the floor. So, um, you know, if you guys have any ideas of, uh, you know, other applications that you want to see from this class. I know some of you have already emailed me and you've kind of, you've kind of talked about it already, uh, but just uh, any, any kinds of uh, applications for finite elements that you can think of, just shout it out or, you know, just say it in the chat, um, you know, and then we can, uh, we can kind of discuss a little bit here. So I wanna take just a little bit of time to do that right now. I can bring up the chat here. Right. So we have a, an entry from the chat talking about phase change. So, uh, so phase change is uh, basically simulating when um, something like like a flowing fluid or a solid, you know, changes from one phase to the other. So um, that's definitely a very uh, important topic, um, especially if you're working with, um, you know, uh, um, you know, flows of fluids in like engines where you have kind of extreme temperature differences. Uh, but I will tell you right now that we will not uh, get to that in this class because we're going to be focusing kind of on, um, you know, the, the methodology behind finite elements and phase change is an extremely complicated problem where, you know, you kind of need to take some graduate classes in like thermodynamics and heat transfer to, uh, to really understand that. So you can definitely do that with finite elements, but we're not going to get to it in this class. All right, anyone have any other, um, you know, application areas that they want to do? So we have one from the chat. So uh, pressure drop across a valve. Absolutely, that's one thing you can do with finite elements. Um, so the, th the, the interesting things with valves is that, um, you know, a lot of them, you know, are, are fairly complex structures. You know, they, they do something fairly simple that they kind of block off flow, but the internal workings of, of the valve are, are pretty complicated. Um, so the, the nice thing about valves that, you know, um, um, you know, and kind of the advent of the internet is a lot of people have created like CAD files for, uh, for these mechanical parts, especially if it's something that's that's standard. And what you can do is you can take those CAD files and you can load it into um, a finite element software like ANSYS um, and then run a simulation on it to compute things like the pressure drop. So, you know, we'll be going over that a little bit um, in the class. So, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be showing you how you go from like SOLIDWORKS um, model to a finite element simulation. So that's, de that's definitely a great example. Okay, so the, uh, we have a couple more. So we have one called the poltrusion process. Um, so I have, I have to admit that's something that I don't uh, know what it is, but uh, I can definitely look that up and uh, I, can, I can definitely, uh, um, you know, get back to you on that. Um, but, you know, if it's something that's governed by differential equations, you, you can definitely simulate it with finite elements. 
Um, so we have vertical pumps. So absolutely, that's something you can do with finite elements. Um, you know, pumps are another one of those things that are very, um, you know, difficult to um, to do hand calculations on just because they're they're you know they're so intricate and so complex and in, in, in the parts that are inside. Um, so next we have vibration EMI. So that's definitely something that you can do. So we'll we'll be going over we'll go over a little bit of uh, of resonant frequency analysis, or, or I'll, I'll at least show you how to do how to do that within uh, ANSYS uh, because it is something that's that's really valuable to to know. Um, so next we have electromagnetic waves. So you know absolutely. So um, so you know just like you know all the physical processes that we talked about uh, that we talked about. Um, you know, um, electromagnetics have their own differential equations that they uh, that they follow. So you can certainly solve those within finite elements, and you know, a lot of people do to uh, to perform analysis like that. Right? So that's definitely something um, that you can do. We we won't focus on it too much in this class because I I, I want to mostly focus on like uh, actually you know we'll, we'll mostly focus on heat transfer and and, and structural mechanics. Um, but ANSYS does have capabilities to do um, electromagnetic waves. Right. So the uh, um, so the question is uh, um, mo uh, modal or harmonic. So that that's kind of going back to vibration analysis. So yeah, both of those um, both of those work. Um, um, both of those will work. So modal analysis will give you the uh, the resonant frequency, and I think harmonic analysis um, gets something slightly. I need I need to double check that before I, I kind of say something on that. All right. So we have another uh, entry for the mechanical behavior of coronary sense. So um, Definitely something that's a very specific, um, but you know something that's uh, something that I've I've personally studied. So that's definitely something that uh, that that can be done. So um, there's a lot um, that's done with um, you know within CFD to uh, basically um, you know see how medical devices like stents will behave within the human body. So definitely something that you can do with finite elements. All right, all of these are are really great. Um, are there any more uh, any more suggestions before we uh, we move on with the lecture? All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Um, so now that you know we have now that we've kind of go over, gone over you know uh, what finite elements are used for and some and some common applications, let's talk about the uh, the process. Um, and so, you know, I, I call this the finite element process because these are kind of, you know, these are, this is the actual process that's actually followed, but these are kind of very broad steps. So, um, you know, what we'll be working on a lot in this class is, you know, how are these steps actually implemented? Um, you know, one within commercial code, so we'll definitely be discussing that. Um, but one big part of this class is you'll be seeing, you know, how these um, steps are implemented in a simple MATLAB code. So, um, so um, you know, what you guys are going to be doing for your final project is you're going to be writing basically a simple finite element code within MATLAB. Um, so, you know, you'll definitely be able to kind of see like the guts of like a, a finite element code and how that actually works. Um, okay. So the first step here is discretize. Uh, and so by discretize, what I mean is that, um, you know, in order to actually perform the finite element method, you need to take your complex geometry and you kind of need, you need to break it up into a lot of simpler shapes. Um, so even though, you know, we just talked about how computers are really amazing, they can do all these calculations, computers are, are still actually really dumb. So you, you need to kind of present the problem to them in a way that, um, you know, that they can do. So you can kind of think of them as like a, a really talented kid that, you know, can only do things one way, right? And so what you, what you should notice here uh, in this figure is that, you know, we have something that's fairly um, complex. We have basically a, a flange, um, and, and which is a fairly complex geometry. And we've broken it up into all these basically uh, um, um, in, into a bunch of bricks here, right? And so the nice thing about bricks is that, you know, all these bricks are different sizes, but they all share the same properties that they have the same number of sides. Um, so they all have six sides. Um, they have the same number of corners and they have all the same number of edges. So, um, you know, what you'll, what, we'll, what you'll see later on, um, you know, um, we, we leverage the fact that, um, you know, we, we know what the element shapes look like beforehand to perform a lot of the calculations. Right? And so, um, you know, discretizing is something that's really important and, you know, probably one of the most important steps to, to performing finite element analysis. So, um, uh, one, so one thing I want to highlight is that, you know, I call it discretize here because that's kind of the more precise definition. But um, what you'll see often, especially if you're using ANSYS, is that this step is often called meshing. And so what that means is that we're basically putting a mesh, um, which you know looks like kind of a like a, a net mesh on top of our um, geometry. So uh, discretizing and meshing they mean the same thing. So I, I might use the terms interchangeably, but uh, I think meshing is probably the more common term for this. 
And what's important, another thing that's important to highlight is that each individual shape that you see here, that is an element. So that's where the element, finite element comes from. So, um, you know, when we, when we say we mesh, we say that we're breaking this up into a, a finite amount of finite elements. So when I say, uh, when I refer to an element, that's basically what I mean. So that's the, uh, basically the shape that makes up our, our geometry here. Okay, so the next step here, um, I know at this point in the class makes absolutely no sense, but you know we'll we'll come back to this you know as as we go through the theory. But one one that one thing that's necessary as as you go about uh, finite elements is that you have to assume a functional representation for your solution. So not only are we um, kind of simplifying the um, the geometry for the computer, we have to kind of simplify the space of functions on which it can it can find solutions. Um, so I, I won't say too much here because it's uh, it's it's something that you know kind of makes a lot more sense in context. Um, but basically, what you can um, think about is that you know no matter what your differential equation looks like, what we're what we're often going to assume is that our solution um, will be a linear function or it'll be a quadratic function. So um, so it'll either you know look like uh, um, y is equal to mx plus b, which is a linear function. Or it'll look like uh, y is equal to mx squared plus bx plus c. So basically, we, we assume that the solution looks like a certain way, and that 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 really helps us out quite a bit. And these and these functions that we often assume are called shape functions. So um, so you know we'll, we'll we'll go over this more you know as as we get more into the theory. Right? Okay. So the next step after you uh, assume those functions is to assemble. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is different from Avengers Assemble. So this is uh, basically assembling into a giant matrix. Okay? And so uh, basically what's going to happen is that uh, um, you're, um, you're basically going to be getting a functional representation for every element in your mesh. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to combine them all into one big system uh, in order for you to solve it. Um, and so the, the reason we, we kind of do it like this and we put it in terms of a matrix set of equations is that computers are really, really good at solving these matrix set of linear equations. So, you know, if, if we can get our really complex kind of engineering problem into a matrix form like this, then the, then the computer will basically be able to take it uh, from there. So a big part of the finite element method is, you know, how do we get this really complicated geometry governed by these really complicated partial differential equations? How do we, you know, manipulate the theory and how do we kind of manipulate the math a little bit to get it into something that looks like this, which is a matrix set of equations so the computer can actually solve it. Okay, so the next step is uh, apply boundary conditions. So this is something that's uh, extremely important that you, you know, you'll see from, um, from ANSYS. And so basically what we need to do is we need to uh, um, basically tell the software or tell the computer how the behavior of the solution will look like on the boundaries of our system. So, you know, the, the steps that we talked about previously are, you know, you can think of them as like kind of the governing equations. Um, but in order to actually have an engineering system, you need more than just the governing equations. So you need to actually have some kind of loads, you need to have some kind of forcing, you need to have some kinds of constraints um, in order to actually have like a constraint system. So like if you think back to the beam um, example earlier, you know, if you just have a beam by itself, you know, that's not interesting at all. But what makes it an interesting problem is that you apply kind of the fixed support on the left and the roller support on the right and you apply some loads, right? Then you have some kind of interesting behavior that you can actually solve for. So, um, so finite elements are the same way. So you can't just have a piece of geometry and you can't just have the governing equations. You need, you need to kind of uh, force it a little bit. Um, and so kind of going back to our bridge example earlier, this would be like all the cars that are on the bridge and the winds that are, are blowing on it. So those, those are really essential pieces to a finite element analysis. Um, that you know you'll get very used to uh, um, to think about problems in, in terms of that. So boundary conditions extremely important. Um, you know you can never skip this step. Right? You can't skip any of these steps, but you know boundary conditions are something that's that's really important. Okay, so the next step is solving. Um, so um, this might seem like the step where you spend the most time, but it's actually the step where you spend the least time because this is the part that the computer is. Um, so once you set up the, the equation in terms of a, a, you know, a big matrix and you apply the boundary conditions, you say, go computer, go, and then you know, it, it, it gets the solution for you. And so what that looks like basically is it looks something like this, because remember we had a, a, a big a matrix system. And so if we want to solve for the solution vector X, the way that we solve for that is we invert our linear system K. So we do K to the minus one, and we multiply that by the forcing vector Okay, and so once you solve that, you're, uh, you're basically done. And then from there, what you can do is you can post-process. So you can do things like, um, you know, get the stress distribution in, the, uh, uh, in your, um, uh, in your uh, 
uh, in your geometry, or you can look at you know the temperature distribution. You can look at how much of the deflection is. You know whatever information that you're trying to find from the finite element uh, analysis, you would get that information from the post processing. So the nice thing about ANSYS is that it's uh, it kind of handles all this you know within the software. So it it you know it it kind of has a lot of really nice features to show you these these color contour plots. Um, but sometimes you know especially if you're working with research software you might have to go to another um, software to do this. So one that I use a lot is called Pairview, but um, you know, we probably won't be seeing that in this class because you know, we'll be relying on ANSYS to do a lot of that for us. Okay, so are there uh, any questions on the finite element process before we, uh, we move on? There's a question which I need to lead to go see. All right, so the question is, since the global system is made of stiffness matrices, the solution from inverting it are direct deformation values, correct? It depends, it, so that depends on the, uh, um, the, um, the equation that you're solving. So if you're solving a structural mechanics equation, the solution to that is, a, is the displacement. So that's, that's uh, what you would be solving for. Um, but if you're solving like a heat transfer equation, um, then, your, then your solution values would be like the temperatures. And for fluid mechanics, then the solution values would be velocities. So, um, yeah, so when we, when we get to, you know, different kinds of um, equations, we'll, we'll go over that. But basically what you're solving for will change depending on this, the equation that you're trying to solve. Yeah. Any more questions on, on this before we, uh, we move on? Okay. Okay. Um, so if you pay attention to, if you, you know, haven't paid attention to any slide today, that's, that's fine. But this is the one that I, I want you to really, um, you know, to really kind of emphasize on, uh, where FEA is, is just a tool. So it's, it's literally no better than kind of any other tool that you have from like your hammer to the drill press to, you know, the water jet cutter, you know, it's just a tool. So I think what a lot of people um, kind of fall into the, the fallacy of thinking is that uh, FEA is kind of like God. So, you know, whatever FEA says, whatever FEA, you know, tells you on the computer, that's what's going to happen and you have to kind of follow that. So that's absolutely not true. Uh, FEA is not God, it's just, a, it's just a tool. It's a powerful tool, but it's just a tool, right? So to kind of give you some examples, so you know, let's think of a tool that you know, a carpenter might use. So you know, a, a saw might be great for cutting wood, you know, but if you wanted to make like a chair or something out of the wood, you know, the saw by itself can't actually manufacture you a chair. So you actually need to know how to use the saw in order to actually do something interesting with it, which is you know, make a chair. And FEA is kind of the same way. So if you want to do something interesting with it, you have to know how to use it. Right? So another example would be, you know, a calculator is a great tool for you to have, you know, if you're performing calculations, you know, especially during an exam, but your calculator can't actually take the test for you. If you can't take your calculator and say, calculator, go, you know, and put your calculator down and then you go, you can go eat like a Hot Pocket or something, um, you know, and the calculator is not going to do your test. So it's, uh, it can help you do the test if you know how to use it, but at the end, it's just a tool. So FEA is no different than that. So um, you know, you have to use FEA properly in order to actually get something useful out of it. So if you're trying, if you're going to try to use FEA when, you know, you don't really know what you're doing, then it's basically going to be useless. So there's, there's a term there, there's kind of a phrase that we use often in FEA, which is garbage in, garbage out. So if you give FEA some, some garbage, so you basically maybe use a mesh that's, that's really, you know, coarsely, um, you know, coarsely defined, or you set up your boundary conditions, you know, incorrectly, that doesn't reflect your physical situation, you're going to get something that's, that's garbage, that's going to be useless to you. So you want to make sure that, you know, when you're using FEA, that, you know, you really set up um, the problem correctly, so that you get something useful out of it. So this is, this is a point that I'm, I'm really going to hammer home throughout the class, because, you know, I guarantee you, you know, after we do our first ANSYS activity next week, you're going to think that ANSYS is amazing, and, you know, finite elements can do no wrong. So that's completely false. Finite elements can do wrong, you know, especially if you give it something wrong to begin with. Um, and another important thing is that, you know, your, the FEA solutions that we get, you know, even the most accurate ones are only going to be approximations. So, you know, because, you know, remember when we talked about we assumed a functional form for these solutions, you know, because we have to make all these assumptions, you know, the solutions that we get are only going to be approximations. So they're, they're never going to be exact. Um, they might be really, really close to the exact, but they're never going to be exact. And a lot of, you know, the theory of finite elements and a lot of, you know, what makes, uh, what separates kind of an expert from a novice is that experts know kind of exactly what they need to do to like with the mesh and the boundary conditions to minimize these errors and to make your approximations as close to reality as, as possible. Okay, so with that, I, I want to give just kind of a brief overview of the course. So these are kind of the big kind of topics that we're going to go over. Um, so, you know, we're doing the course introduction today and then starting next week, um, 
on Wednesday, we're going to be going, going over the um, what's called the direct stiffness method. Um, so that's kind of a, a nice way to kind of, you know, motivate these uh, um, finite element ideas. Um, and it's actually, uh, you know, topics that I've, I've never actually taught in a finite element class before, but, um, you know, it's something different. Um, and I think it kind of motivates the theory pretty well. So I'm giving it a try. Um, um, and, but I think, I think it ended up doing really well. Okay. Uh, and then so from there, we'll kind of take a step back a little bit and we'll talk about, you know, how do we actually use finite element analysis to, uh, to solve kind of arbitrary differential equations. Um, so these, so that's kind of the setup for, you know, how is a commercial code like ANSYS actually set up in practice? So a lot of the methods that are within ANSYS are, um, you know, we're going to be going over those methods in the second part of the class, um, or I guess it's the third part. And then at the end of the class, you know, we'll be talking a lot of like, you know, some practical considerations where, you know, if you're going to use FEA, um, you know, in a company to perform some analysis, what are just some, you know, practical um, things that you should know in order to make sure that you do that correctly. And so if we expand this, you know, these are kind of some of the broader topics that we'll go over in this class. And you can see at the top here in green and red, you know, all throughout the class, you know, we'll be kind of connecting a lot of these concepts to ANSYS, which is our commercial software on, you know, how do these concepts, you know, relate to, you know, maybe something that you would use in industry, but also in MATLAB. So, you know, one thing that we'll focus on a lot in this class is, you know, how are these ideas, how are these theories, how are they actually implemented in code so that you kind of, so that you gain, gain kind of an understanding and a, um, you know, uh, uh, kind of a mastery of, you know, under the hood of ANSYS, you know, how are some of these things actually implemented? So those are kind of our two guiding softwares that we're going to be use, using quite a lot in this class. Okay. Um, so a question I get a lot when I teach finite elements is, you know, why do we need to bother learning with the background information anyway? Um, why can't we just do ANSYS for, you know, 15 weeks and then, you know, call it a day? So um, first of all, I, I, would, I would get in trouble doing that. So, you know, we can't do that. Um, and, you know, just like we talked about before, you know, just like, you know, even though finite element analysis is really powerful, it's just a tool. So, you know, it has limitations and it has best practices that you need to, um, you know, be able to do um, in order to actually use it properly. So, you know, and learning the theory and going over that, you know, beforehand is something that's extremely important. And, you know, especially if you're going to be using this professionally, it's, it's important to know those things. Okay? Um, and the next thing is that it, it's not going to work all the time. So, um, you know, even, even if you do everything right, even if you set up your mesh, you set up your boundary conditions correctly, you know, it, it can still give you the wrong answer. So, you know, understanding the, the fundamentals behind the technology will kind of help you debug these problems and, you know, say, you know, it'll help you determine, you know, maybe this is a problem that finite elements can't do. Um, and there's actually, you know, a lot of problems like that in, in reality. Okay? And, you know, and this, this goes especially true because, you know, this is a graduate level course, you know, once you leave this class, you know, you're going to be considered experts in finite elements. So, you know, as an expert, you know, there's, there's a certain responsibility to actually understand your tool well and be honest about its limitations um, so that you can actually use it well within your company. Right? And so to kind of give an example, you know, I, 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 I talk, I think I like to think about a veterinarian uh, quite a bit, right? Um, so a veterinarian, you know, we, we generally expect it to do a lot of these procedural skills like, um, you know, giving shots to animals, taking a blood sample, you know, performing an eye and ear checks, right? So these are kind of like, you know, uh, this kind of the same thing as kind of like, you know, pushing the buttons within ANSYS. Um, but, you know, it, it takes more than that to actually, you know, become a vet. So, um, you know, what we also expect the vets to know is, you know, why we even give shots to our pets to the first place, right? So we don't want our vets to be just be giving just random shots to our pets just because, right? Um, so we also expect them to know, you know, what, if an animal is sick, you know, what do we do and what, and what is the reason for that, right? And, you know, we expect them to be experts in something like animal behavior. So, you know, if our pet's acting weird, then we expect them to uh, be able to tell us, you know, why that's the case. So finite elements are the same way. So, you know, not only do you need to know, you know, where to click within ANSYS to set up a simulation, but you need to know why you're doing those steps and, you know, um, you know, make sure you're doing them thoughtfully and, you know, with, with good reason. Okay, are there any questions on that before we uh, start going over the, the syllabus? Okay, so, uh, so let's kind of uh, quickly go over the syllabus because I, what I also wanted to do um, is I, I wanted to uh, give a tour of the new Canvas site because I know Canvas is kind of a new thing. It's a, it's a brand new thing for me. Um, so I'm sure for a lot of you, it's a brand new thing too. So I just want to kind of give you a quick tour of the Canvas site. Um, I also wanted to show you the virtual computing lab. So, um, so the nice thing about ANSYS is that there's um, a, a free student version that you can download, but the student version has a, a ton of limitations that, you know, kind of restricts it, restricts you from doing actually anything interesting. 
Um, so what the uh, what the university has set up is basically a way for you to virtually access the uh, the computers in our computer lab. So the, the, the computers in our computer lab have a, a much nicer license of ANSYS. So you can actually do you know a little bit bigger problems with the with the lab computers. Um, you know, but obviously this semester we're not able to access them. So um, I'll show you how to virtually access them, and that's that's another thing I want to do this uh, today. Okay. Okay, so let's check office hours. Um, so office hours, um, you know, like we said before, it's, uh, you know, we have no physical meeting point because, you know, we're not allowed to be on campus, but all the office hours will be conducted through Zoom. So if you go to the course website, you'll see Zoom links for, you know, the Monday office hours, the Tuesday, Tuesday office hours, Thursday, right? And these are all the times given for, for these office hours. Um, so, you know, if you're free during those times and you have a question about the class, definitely just pop in, um, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to answer those questions for you, okay? Um, and so, um, you know, just just to kind of uh, um, just kind of define what you know what I see office hours as. So office hours are mostly for you know discussing anything that you're confused about with the course content, any questions that you have for the homework assignments, or you know maybe you have some questions about how I grade an exam. You know, feel free to answer ask any of those questions within office hours. Right? Uh, or if you just want to stop by and just you know say hi and introduce yourself, you know I'm always happy to see that too. Um, office hours during the first couple weeks tend to be pretty lonely because uh, you know no one has questions yet. So you know if you stop by and just say hi, you uh, you actually make me quite happy. Yeah. Um, and then besides these times, you know if you can't make any of these times or you know there's an emergency that you know you want to speak with me, definitely just send me an email. You know and I'm always happy to open a private room for you. Um, you know where we can kind of discuss things like that. Right? So as long as I'm not teaching another class or as long as I'm not you know in another meeting um, or not doing anything that's really pressing, you know I'm, I'm always happy to uh, uh, to make appointments and. Um, to discuss things kind of in, in, in private Zoom rooms. So definitely let me know if there's a, if, you know, if you can, uh, if you would like an appointment for a time that works better for you. Okay, okay so uh, these are the course level learning objectives. So, you know, we've talked about these at the beginning of class, but, um, you know, the course itself has some learning objectives that, you know, we can, uh, we can discuss. Uh, and so the idea with these is that, you know, by the time, you know, we reach week 16, um, you know, if we count the, uh, the, the, the fall um, recess, you know, you should be able to do all of these, uh, um, all of these things. So um, we talked a bit about the first one today. So describing how and why finite element sim um, simulation can be used in practical engineering situations, right? So that's something that we did today. And then all the rest of the ones we'll cover for the rest of the class. So these are kind of like my, uh, my, my North stars throughout the, uh, throughout the class where, you know, I, I always try to make sure that, you know, all the content that I provide for the class, all the lecture notes, all the homework assignments, all the exams are related to these learning objectives. So they help me a lot in keeping the course um, organized. And I think, you know, um, it helps, it help, hopefully it helps you guys a lot to kind of uh, organize your study uh, as well. So definitely pay close attention to the learning objectives because I, I use them quite, uh, quite a bit. Okay. okay, so let's talk about the deliverables with class. So there will be uh, nine assignments. Um, so those will be homework assignments. Um, I have uh, five uh, homework assignments planned, and uh, four of those assignments are going to be ANSYS labs. So those will be, you know, activities that you do within ANSYS, um, and then you do something, and you show me some screenshots, and you submit it, and you do some analysis. Okay. Uh, so we'll have two midterm exams um, for uh, that you can see the dates for at the bottom, uh, and instead of a final exam, we're going to have a final project. So we talked a bit about that before. Uh, basically, what you're going to be expected to do is to implement a, a simple 2D finite element code uh, to solve the heat equation. So uh, I know that sounds kind of really intimidating right now, but you know we'll work our way up towards that towards the uh, towards the end of the semester, where hopefully by the end you know you'll have confidence in doing that. So we'll do plenty of practice with MATLAB, and you know we'll have plenty of practice in you know how do we actually set up a finite element code. So uh, hopefully you know it, it'll still be a lot of work, but you know hopefully by the end you know, you know you'll feel a lot uh, more prepared. Um, so the lowest homework uh, will be dropped, um, just because I know, you know, especially, you know, with virtual instruction, you know, lots of things can happen. So, you know, I, I always want to give you guys the flexibility where, like, you know, you don't have to do every single assignment in order to get the, the grade. Um, but, you know, I do design those assignments um, for them to be beneficial to you. So they're, you know, they're not just busy work. You know, they give you kind of the, the practice that you need with all the learning objectives so that, you know, you can do well on the exams and you kind of, um, you kind of hammer home a lot of the concepts that we talk about in the lecture. So, you know, even though the lowest homework will be dropped, please do do them all. You know, even if, even if you have to do it late, um, I think, you know, I designed these to be as beneficial to you as, as possible. Um, so the midterm exams uh, will not be cumulative. So, you know, once we're done with midterm one, you know, we won't be tested on that anymore. Um, but the final project, you know, we, it will use knowledge that, you know, we, you gain throughout the entire semester. So don't throw that knowledge out, you know, you'll still need it, especially if you do finite elements after this class. 
Um, but you know, the midterm exams themselves will not be cumulative just because I know throughout the semester, there's lots of stuff going on. So I want to kind of, uh, you know, make your studying a little bit easier. for you. Okay. And these are all the, uh, the dates planned for the exams. And the final report is due during finals week, um, on the Monday of finals week by 1159. Okay. Uh, are there any questions so far on the, uh, on the syllabus or, you know, anything we've gone over so far? Nice. There's a question. So the question is, uh, will the exams be online as well? Yes. Um, so if you kind of had me in the in the spring semester, you know, we'll basically use the same format where, um, you know, I'll upload the exam questions onto the course website. Um, I'll actually integrate it within Canvas this time um, so that uh, mostly just to make things easier for me to, to grade. Because um, uh, what happened last semester was, you know, people uploaded like um, a batch of like 14 JPEGs that I had to open individually and they were all out of order. So I'm, I'm going to use... Um, Canvas to organize it a bit better, just to make my life easier for the grading. Uh, but they will be conducted online, um, so uh, so you'll be taking them from your uh, from your homes as well. So the question is, will the exams be more ANSYS MATLAB dependent, or will we need to do calculations by hand? So all the um, so for the exams, you won't need ANSYS or MATLAB for them at all. So I'm going to leave those. Um, I'm going to leave that material for the labs and for kind of the activities that we do in the class. The point of the exams is to kind of hammer home a lot of the theory and, and the concepts. So you know you'll be doing a lot of um, you know explaining concepts with words with short answers, um, and you'll be doing some some kind of really basic calculations and um, some basic problem setup. So um, with finite elements, you know the the big thing that you'll have to do a lot of times you, you will have to set up kind of that global matrix set of equations that we talked about before. Um, so basically once you, once you can do that by hand, then that's kind of where I, I stop most of the time. So, um, that's kind of what you can, you can expect with the exams. Okay. All right. Any more questions on, uh, on this before we, uh, we move on? Uh, professor. Yeah. Uh, for the date of the final project is due, uh, mm -hmm. you mentioned it's December 21st. Is that, should that be the the previous week or because that December 21st is already the first day of winter session. Yeah. So I, I put it towards the, uh, um, I put it towards the end cause I, I, I know, um, you know, uh, you guys have finals, um, and, and all that. Um, so I, I, I put it towards the end. So you kind of have a little extra time to, to do that. So usually they, uh, they give me a week after the semester sub to submit grades. So if you turn in by that date, then, uh, then I, I usually have enough time to grade them and, um, you know, get them back and get the grades in before they're actually due. So I do put, I do push it back quite a bit, um, just to make sure that you guys have time to, uh, to do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Okay. Okay, so here's the, um, the grade breakdown. So your homeworks, um, all the homework assignments will be worth 20% of the grade. Uh, each of the midterms will be 15%, and then the final exam will be, uh, or the final project will be worth uh, half your grades, 50%, okay? Um, um, oh, you can, you can ignore this line. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's a holdover from uh, when I taught 410 last, uh, um, last semester. So there will be no uh, small project for the homeworks. Your, the only project will be your final project, and it will be big. So um, you won't have to worry about any additional projects because of that. Okay? Uh, and then depending on your, uh, your course percentage at the, uh, at the end, this is how your, uh, the letter grades will be assigned. Okay? Um, and so, um, you know, um, you know I, I, don't, I don't do straight up grading because, uh, uh, you know, because a lot of things can happen during the semester, you know, especially when we have a virtual thing like this. So one thing that I, I do for all my classes is that I, I do what I, what I call scaling. Um, so, and what I mean by that is that, um, you know, after all the grades are in, you know, I can basically see very quickly, you know, what's the overall class average in terms of percentage. So let's say, you know, the overall class average is uh, 70%. Right? Uh, and so what I, I like to do is I like to add a flat amount of points to everyone's grade such that the average is up to something that's, that's good. So, um, so for grad, for, so for grad classes, I know it's a little bit different because I know you guys at least need a B minus to pass the class. And so I at least want the average to be passing. So, um, you know, uh, what, so what I'm going to do at the end of the, the semester is that, uh, you know, if the class average is below that 80% for the B minus, I'm going to add a flat amount of points to everyone's grade such that the class average is that 80%. Um, so on average, people pass the, the class. Um, so last semester was my first time teaching a grad class, and it, it, was, it was very strange just because half the semester was, um, was virtual. Um, so I didn't actually end up doing that, although I, I did do a lot of other things. Um, which I don't plan to repeat. So if you're coming from 520, uh, don't expect the same things to happen at, 
at the end of the semester. Um, but hopefully, you know, we're, we're not too far off from, from that by the end. Okay, um, so let's talk textbooks. So the course textbook's not required, um, but these can be uh, good references. So I have two for the class here. Um, so I have one by Logan, um, and it's called The First Course in Finite Elements. And then I have a book by Kotromanos, which is called Fundamentals of Finite um, Element Analysis, Linear Finite Element Analysis. So this book is, is fairly new, and it's, a, it's actually very good. I, I, I like it quite a lot. Um, so I, I had a question today that, that was really good, because I, I know, you know a lot of you guys are planning to take this class for your comprehensive exam. You know, and for the, comp, for the comp exam, you're allowed to bring one textbook as a reference. So um, I had someone ask me, you know, which textbook should you, um, should you get if you, uh, if you want to get, uh, bring one for the comp exam? Um, so I, since I'm teaching the class this year, I'll, I'll probably be writing the, the question for this, um, for this. But the way the comp exam works is that, you know, I have to write two questions. Um, and you get to choose which one you do. So you can do, um, you know, either question one or question two. And the way, I'm, the way I plan to do it is that uh, question one, is gonna be you know, based on the material from this first book here. And question two will be from the material from this book. Um, and in terms of you know, what that means for the class, it'll be very easy. So um, basically midterm one will be from the material from this book and midterm two will be from the material from the second book. So um, you, know, you can kind of wait until later in the semester to see you know, which, uh, which, um, which material you find generally easier or makes more sense to you and then pick up that book for the comprehensive exam. You know, I, I plan to have one question from, from each book. So, um, so in terms of this class, that means one question, one of the comp exam questions will be from midterm one, and the other question will be from midterm two. So um, hopefully that information is useful to you guys um, in choosing which textbook to, to get, okay? Um, but you know, the reason I, I, I don't require them is that I know textbooks are extremely expensive, and I know now, especially, you know, finances are really tight. So um, you, know, you don't have to get these textbooks. I do post all my lecture notes, and you know, all the lectures themselves will be recorded and uploaded on YouTube. So you know, what I hope is that you know, just from the materials that I give you, you know, you'll be able to, to do the class. Um, and then the homework assignments don't rely on the book uh, as well, because I, I give you basically the full problem set. Because you know, I make up all my own problems, um, and I give, I just give them to you straight up. So and you don't need to refer, you don't need to refer to the book to do any of the homework assignments or anything. But if you do want to kind of, um, you know, have a, a nice reference and, um, you know, look and see some of the things that we're going over in the class in more detail, then uh, picking up these books might be of interest. Okay? Um, and you don't need to get these these editions here. So you know, try to find a cheap one. Um, or a free one if, if you can't, but I can't uh, officially endorse that, but um, if you can, take advantage. Okay, okay so let's talk about um, kind of some of the, uh, the, the technical support that we'll get for, from this semester. So, you know, the course website, um, it's moved. So, you know, in the past we've used Titanium, which is a, a Moodle-based system, and we moved to a newer one called Canvas. Um, so, you know, I, even though it's a new system, I'm gonna be using it the same way. So basically any material that I produce for the class, uh, lecture notes, homework assignments, solutions, study guides, you know, uh, um, tutorials, I'll post that all, all of it on Canvas, okay? Um, I'll also be using Canvas to um, send announcements to you guys, uh, so definitely keep um, that in mind. Um, you know, and those will be emailed to you. And oh, one thing that seems to be uh, catching a lot of people by surprise, um, Cal State Fortin kind of sneakily ended its service with, uh, with Gmail. So, you know, if, if you haven't gotten emails in a while, um, try accessing your email from the uh, from the portal, and you'll see that it changed to Outlook. Um, so um, I've already sent a, an email for the class. So if you haven't gotten it yet, definitely check your your Outlook. For that, okay? Um, okay. And then one other thing that I'm trying new for this class is I've, I've created a Discord um, server or Discord channel. Okay? Um, and so you know, one thing that we're going to be really missing out on in this uh, in this virtual instruction is just kind of that that in class um, um, experience where you know. We're all kind of sitting, um, you know, semi uncomfortably in, in a small space, um, and you know, um, you know, you you meet people in, in, in the class, and you say, like, "Hey, you know, my name is so and so. You know, do you want to study together, or do you want to work on this homework together?" And, and you know, that was easy to do when you had the classroom, but you know, when we're all kind of sitting in our own homes um, over this uh, Zoom thing, you know, that's a lot harder to do. So, you know, I, I really wanted to make a place where you guys can kind of, you know, informally discuss things about the class um, and kind of do things like organize study groups, you know, ask questions, answer each other's questions, you know, a lot of, a lot of the things that, you know, you would normally do within the classroom, you know, hopefully that you can, we can kind of emulate that on the Discord. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll pop in, I'll pop in every now and then on the Discord. Yeah, my voice gets just cracked, it does that every now and then. Um, you know, especially, you know, if there's a question that, you know, a lot of people are asking and, and, you know, no one seems to be answering, I'll pop in and answer questions every now and then, but, 
you know, really that's just, that's a place for you guys to kind of, um, you know, interact with each other um, um, for the class. Okay? Um, so I will say that, you know, in, in one of the classes I've taught earlier today, uh, students have already used that, the Discord to, uh, uh, to share kind of the, the, the legal PDF for the, the course textbook. So, um, you know, you can certainly do that if you, uh, if someone finds it, you know, and you want to share it. Um, and I'll just say, you know, I, uh, I'm not really paying attention to the Discord. So, you know, definitely use that to help each other out and, uh, and you know, meet people and, uh, and, and organize study groups because it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's for you guys. So if you haven't had a chance to join the Discord server, uh, definitely join it. So you can find the link for that on the Canvas site. Um, but, you know, don't, but actually don't use the, the link that I sent in the email because that one is incorrect. So that'll have you join uh, the Discord server for another class. Um, so use the link that's on the course website. Okay, so let's talk course policies. So, uh, so homeworks. Uh, so I do accept late homeworks, um, but you know each day that is late, you know I have to dock ten percent to kind of you know encourage you to turn it in on time. Okay, um, and so um, you know this this doesn't really apply because you know we'll all be submitting our homeworks you know through Canvas. Um, but you know if Canvas isn't working for some reason, you can always scan your homeworks and email it to me directly as well. So you know that can work too. Uh, so for regrades, um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. So I, I make mistakes when I grade all the time. So, you know, if you want to uh, ask for a regrade, um, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, but, you know, it has to be within a week after I return it to you. Okay? And the reason for this is, you know, I don't want to get to week 16 and you want to regrade for midterm one, right? Um, because, you know, when I grade your stuff, you know, I leave feedback to you guys, um, you know, with comments that I hope will be helpful to, you know, maybe um, smooth over some uh, some things that you might be confused about or to kind of point out, you know, some things like you might want to consider this for the calculation. So I want you guys reading that feedback kind of in a timely manner. And if you kind of wait to the end, you know, it's, it's not really that useful to you because, you know, it's something that you learned like 10 weeks ago. So, uh, and so, you know, to kind of encourage that, you know, I, I, I have this regrade policy where, you know, you have to ask me within a week, um, you know, otherwise I'm, I'm not gonna look at it, okay. Uh, and so email, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I usually am really good with my emails, um, except on weekends. Um, but what helps me, what helps me a lot answer your emails faster is if you put EGME 541 in the subject line, just so I kind of know right away that you're asking a question for uh, this particular class. And that kind of, kind of narrows my focus down a bit. Okay, okay. academic dishonesty. So, um, you know, even just because we're virtual, you know, doesn't mean that this rule doesn't apply. So, um, you know, just like, you know, we do in-person in instruction. Uh, academic dishonesty won't be tolerated. So, you know, if you do commit academic dishonesty, you know, at the very least, you'll get a zero on that assignment. Um, and if it's, you know, something that's serious, you know, I, I have to make a referral to student conduct and, you know, you could fail the class depending on, you know, how severe it was, right? And so it's, it's a little bit weird um, for, this, uh, for this semester, you know, because we're all virtual. So, you know, when you're doing the exams and stuff, like there's, there's no way for me to check, you know, if you're not using your notes or the book. So, you know, all the exams and uh, all the homeworks will, you know, be open note, open book. You can view the YouTube videos if you want, right? Um, but, you know, the one thing that I, I ask the most is that you, you please do not, you know, uh, talk with your friends or, you know, uh, work on the exams together with your friends because, you know, um, you know you're, you're taking this class, you know, to learn finite elements yourself. And, you know, if, if, you're, uh, if you're doing stuff like that, you're really kind of cheating yourself out of, of the experience, right? Um, and so, you know, whenever I teach a class, it's, it's not... I, I don't I don't teach it with the gatekeeper mindset where it's like, you know, like, oh, I'm here to like, you know, test everyone and, and you know, fail the ones that aren't worthy of finite elements, you know, that's not, that's never my goal. So my goal is, you know, is for everyone to learn something, some something valuable in the class, you know, and hopefully something that they can take into their future careers, right? And so by cheating or, you know, by uh, working together with your, you know, classmates on an exam, you're really, you know, short circuiting yourself on, on that stuff, right? Um, so at any point in the class, you know, if you feel like you're struggling, you know, something doesn't make sense to you, um, you know, please, you know, give me a chance before you resort to cheating, right? So, you know, like I said, you know, my goal is for everyone to succeed in this class. And, you know, uh, I want to be given that opportunity to help you out through something, you know, before you resort to, you know, academic dishonesty. So um, if you come, you can come to me even like, you know, 10 minutes before an exam and say, like, I'm totally lost, you know, I'm not going to, you know, criticize you. I'm not going to, you know, look down on you. I'm not going to, you know, um, lecture you or anything like that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to judge you, right? Because, um, you know, my job is to, to help you, you know, and that's, that's, that's what I feel like my job is, is to do. So, you know, please give me that chance, you know, before you, you resort to academic dishonesty. Okay, so we've come to the last slide. So the last thing I want you to do, um, or, you know, the, actually the first thing um, that I want you to do, and, and a lot of you have done this already, is to send me an email uh, introducing yourself. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I really like to get to know all the students in my class. 
um, you know, especially the grad students, because, you know, this is only my second grad class. So, you know, it really helps me a lot to know, you know, where you guys are coming from, you know, what your goals are, you know, what you expect from the course, because uh, that really, that information really helps me to kind of modify the course and, uh, and to kind of change things around to make things as useful as possible to, to everyone, right? Um, so I have some questions here that uh, you can consider. Um, so you don't you don't have to answer these questions, but these are just some things to think about, um, you know, as you answer your as you uh, send me your email. And uh, this is going to be due on Friday, so you know if you send it to me before 11:59 p.m., um, you know you'll get full credit for it. And uh, don't forget to add EGME 541 to the subject line. Okay. okay are there uh, any questions on this before we uh, we tour the uh, the course website? Okay, um, so let's tour the course website. So that, that took a little bit longer than I, uh, than I envisioned, um, but that's okay. Um, you know, we can, uh, probably we can do the, uh, the virtual computing labs another day. Um, I know today's kind of in an overload of information, so maybe that's a good idea. So uh, let's tour the, uh, the course website, okay? Um, so uh, when you enter Canvas and you click on our course, you'll be taken to this page. So this is the, uh, the home page of the course, right? And my, my goal with this page um, when I was designing it was to basically give you access. Uh, this is kind of the central hub where you can basically access, you know, everything that you need to for the class. Okay? Um, so here's some basic information of the class. My name is clickable, so you can click on it and you can see uh, kind of the door key introduction that I wrote for myself. You know, if you're interested in reading that, uh, you don't have to, but it's, uh, it's there for you. Okay? So here we have a description of the course. Here we have our course learning objectives. Okay? Uh, here's our syllabus. Um, actually, let me change the student view. So here's our syllabus. Um, so, you know, basically all the information that we covered today will be uh, in this PDF here. So definitely take a look at that. Okay. And then all the Zoom links for uh, the lecture um, and all the office hours will be uh, here as well. Okay. So our next office hours will be tomorrow at, at 2.30. Okay. And then uh, the link to join the Discord server is this one right here. So if you have a Discord account, um, basically all you have to do is click this link and then it will uh, have you join the server. Um, so uh, one thing with the Discord server is that you won't be able to post right away. Uh, one thing that I'm scared for, um, and I'm scared for for our lectures, is that we might have some some trolls. Um, so I, I basically set it up such that uh, uh, once you join the Discord server, you can't post anything for uh, for 10 minutes. So uh, so wait that 10 minutes, and then after that, you'll be able to post. Okay. Um, so what you'll see on the Discord server is that there are um, actually several um, several channels here. So I have a channel here for introductions. So if you want to kind of just leave, you know, you know, just a quick thing about yourself, just introduce yourself to your classmates, you can do that. Okay. I have a channel here for questions. So, you know, any questions that you have about, you know, maybe like a homework assignment or something that's confusing about the course, you can ask that here. Okay. Um, and feel free to answer each other's questions. So I'll, I'll pop in here every now and then, but uh, you know, I won't be super active. Okay. And then in case you wanted to share some memes, um, you know, uh, making fun of me or, you know, making fun of the course, you know, I, I created a channel for you here as well. Okay? Uh, so this is kind of just, you know, a lighthearted channel. So, you know, um, so use this, you know, as, as much um, as you want, you know, if anything, you can, uh, you can view the, the list of everyone else in the class and you can kind of use that to set up some, um, some study groups. So, you know, this, this place is for, for you guys. So definitely uh, take advantage. Okay. So the next um, aspect of the course website that I want to go over is this course outline here. Okay. So this is kind of the, the central hub to basically um, basic access um, all the materials in the class. So all the lecture notes, um, all the recorded lectures, you know, all the homework assignments can be accessed from here. So, um, so this is kind of similar to how things are organized, or at least how I organize things on Titanium by week. Okay. So, uh, you know, the only one that's active right now is week one, because we're in week one. Okay. So let's go ahead and click that. And what you'll see for this week is that, you know, I, I have kind of a brief description of, you know, what, we, uh, what we're going to go over this week. Um, so if you want to read this kind of uh, over the weekend um, or, you know, before we have class, I think, it, you know, I, I write it to kind of give you kind of a, a flavor of what we're going to do. Okay? Um, so we have the, uh, all the learning objectives for this week. So, you know, by the end of this week, you'll be able to do all these things. Okay? Here I have the links for the recorded lectures. So as soon as I have the lectures uploaded on YouTube and processed, the, you can find them here. Okay? Um, here I have the assignments. So right now we only have one assignment for the introductions. Okay. Um, that says due 8.30, uh, but it's actually due 8.28, so I'll, I'll fix that. Okay. Um, and here we have the, uh, um, the files. Um, so here's where I'll place you know, all the lecture notes, the lecture slides. And here I have an additional uh, tutorial here. 
Um, so if you're interested in downloading and installing ANSYS on your home computer, um, I have basically a PDF that kind of shows you how to do that. So this is the free student version of ANSYS where, um, you know, this can be helpful, especially, you know, if, if you're trying to use the virtual computing lab, but it's, uh, it's, you know, a lot of people are using it, then this is kind of a good option. And so uh, what's going to happen is that, you know, the week prior, so usually on Fridays, what I'll do is that I'll, I'll do, I'll make the, uh, um, the page for that given week and I'll make this link uh, clickable. Um, so, you know, before the week happens, you'll have access to all the lecture notes, um, all the assignments for the week, you'll have the description and the learning objectives. So, you know, you'll be able to, uh, to get that information before the week starts. So, you know, if you, if you want to uh, follow along with the lectures by using the lecture notes, you can definitely do that. Uh, uh, okay, are there any questions on the Canvas site so far? Okay, so let's uh, quickly tour. Oh, question. Uh, so the question is, you said we can do finer meshes on the online version of ANSYS. So yes, uh, so we might actually have time for it today, but if you use the, uh, the virtual computing labs, um, which basically gives you access to uh, our, our labs at the computer labs on at Fullerton, um, you can do uh, bigger problems on those. So that's so those are finer meshes. Yeah, just because uh, the school paid for uh, for better licenses for for those ones. It's not quite the professional license, but it's uh, it's better than the student version at least. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and move on. So the next tab here is announcements. Um, so, you know, you'll be getting all the announcements in the emails, but if you want to see an archive of, of all the announcements, you can check here. Okay? So I only have one announcement so far, which is just the welcome message. Um, so unfortunately, when I sent out the, uh, um, the email, this link here for the Discord server was incorrect. So I corrected it here, but I don't think it's going to correct it in your email. So, um, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you want to join the Discord server, definitely use the link that's on the homepage of the course website. Okay? This next tab here, you can... Um, um, you can look at the assignments. Oh, I guess I do have it at August 30th. Um, so I guess it's, uh, so the introductions are due by this Sunday. Okay. Um, and so, you know, this is a great page to look to see, you know, what assignments are going to be due soon and, uh, you know, what uh, I have assigned. So this is basically your, uh, your first stop for, uh, for any assignments that are coming up. Okay. Next you have your grades. So you can see here, um, you know, we don't, we don't really have as any assignments yet, but here, but here you'll be able to see, um, basically all the assignments that uh, I've assigned. And, uh, um, you know, whatever grade that you get, you'll, you'll be able to see it here. Okay? And so the next thing is the people's tab. So here's the list of everyone in the class. Okay? And the last tab, you know, this is probably the, a, a tab you'll see, you'll use quite often, is that this is where I'll put all the files for the course. So all the lecture notes, all the assignment PDFs, all the homework solutions, all the exam solutions, you know, I'll put all the files here. So you know, if you don't want to look for the files, you know, through the weekly viewer here from the homepage, you can just click here and you can get, just see kind of the raw files here. So I've, I've organized this into several folders. So assignments here will have, you know, all the homework PDFs, all of our ANSYS labs, um, um, you know, stuff like that. I have solutions here where I'll put, you know, the homework solutions, the exam solutions in. Here we have the lecture notes. So here I have, uh, you can see here, um, you know, I have the slides from today and the notes that we're gonna cover starting on Wednesday. And I have the instructions here on how to download and install ANSYS Student, okay? And then um, probably starting on Wednesday where I'll actually be writing notes on my iPad, you know, I'll upload those notes as well. So you'll see that in this folder for my lecture notes. Um, so you, I mean, you'll be able to access all these files from this course outline, but if you wanna, if you wanna just download like a very specific file, you can go to this files tab here and you can find it. All right, are there uh, any questions on the, uh, on the course website? So the question is, uh, can we access the virtual computing labs at all time or is there a time limit? So uh, you'll be able to access it uh, 20, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, but you can only access it for a certain amount of time. Um, so the, I think the maximum amount of time that you can rent um, for on the virtual computing labs is four hours. So um, usually that's, uh, that's enough, especially to do a lot of the assignments that we're gonna do in this class. Um, but, you know, just be aware of that time limit so that, you know, it doesn't suddenly close down on you. So, you know, if you're getting close to the time limit, you know, be sure to save your work, um, email it to yourself because, um, you know, you, even if you, um, even if you create another session within the virtual computing lab, you won't be able to access the same files, um, you know, and just, just be aware of that. But, you know, I, I so I think we'll do that for, um, 
for um, next week. Um, but we'll, we'll discuss that. So it's, uh, it's not four hours per day, but it's four hours um, per session. So what you'll see is that when you, uh, when you log in or you, when you create a session on the virtual computing labs, you have to create it for four hours. So after four hours, it'll kind of automatically kick you out, but you can create another session for four hours right after that. So it's, it's a little bit obnoxious, but they, they do that just to make sure that someone doesn't you know, leave the virtual computing labs online all the time and kind of hog it so that other people can, uh, can use it. All right, any other questions? Um, so that's, that's all I'm gonna do for today. So I'll, I'll stick around for a little bit after class. So you know, if people have you know, had questions that they thought up during the class, you know, then we'll talk about. Um, but if not, then, uh, um, then I will see everyone on Wednesday and we'll do our math and math. Okay. Uh, so the question is how many computers are there to log into? So um, basically it will be the exact same amount as the computers in, the, uh, in our usual finite element lab. So I think there's like 50 something computers there. I wanna say 56. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's quite a bit, but they, they have kind of a very um, sophisticated system just to make sure that uh, it never gets too overloaded. So if, if too many people are logged into the virtual computing labs, um, if you try to make a new session, it'll basically say, you know, you might have to wait 30 minutes, one hour, two hours in order for, for space to, to open up. Um, but I, just from the people that used it last semester, it, uh, it, it, it seemed to be an issue um, maybe like once or twice, but usually, usually you can get access to the virtual computing labs pretty easily. Yeah. All right, any more, uh, any more questions? Okay, so uh, so you guys are free to go. Um, so I'll see everyone on Wednesday. So we'll be doing a review of um, kind of the important, uh, mostly linear algebra concepts um, that you know we're going to be using a lot in this course, uh, and we'll be doing kind of a review of kind of the, the basic MATLAB functions that we'll we'll use. Okay. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in today, and I'll see everyone on Wednesday. Yep, thank you guys. <laughs> Thanks. I might wear these one day just to kind of mix things up. Oh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> someone, someone commented nice headphones. Oh, no. Great, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is, uh, I, I've never done it before, kind of, you know, as we discussed earlier this summer, but, you know, I'm definitely, you know, ready to learn, learn it with you um, and kind of struggle through it together. Because uh, that's, uh, yeah, anytime you do multi-physics stuff and phase change, it's, it's hard. Um, I, I, and I almost want to say that it's, it's, it's an almost impossible to do on a, on a home computer just because it's so computationally intensive. But uh, you might be able to do it on the, uh, on the virtual computing maps. Um, Oh, okay. Okay, that sounds good.
Any more questions, Chris? I'm gonna go eat dinner otherwise. All right, cool. So I'll see you on Wednesday. Yeah, send me the uh, um, those uh, ADP APDL commands. Uh, definitely interested in taking a look. All right, see you.